Hi everyone, I'm Ravi Handa. Welcome to another video on summary. In this, we need to go through a passage, go through the options which are given and choose the option which best captures the essence of the passage. A distinguishing feature of language is our ability to refer to absent things known as displaced reference. So displaced reference is something when we talk about a thing which is not in our environment, it is something which exists elsewhere or maybe something that doesn't even exist. A speaker can bring distant reference to mind in the absence of any obvious stimuli. So a speaker can do that. He can say about things. He can talk about things in the absence of that obvious stimuli. He can still do it and bring it to our mind. Thoughts not limited to the here and now. So thoughts can be anywhere. Anything can pop into our head for unfathomable reasons. This ability to think about distant things necessarily precedes the ability to talk about them. So the idea that we are talking about some distant things or we are making a displaced reference, this thing has existed or this thought or this concept must have existed before we got the ability to talk about them. Thought precedes meaningful referential communication. So thought should come before we are able to communicate about it. A prerequisite for the emergence of a human-like meaningful symbols is that the mental categories they relate to can be invoked even in the absence of an immediate stimuli. So this sort of thought can occur even though there is no immediate stimuli which is present. And this sort of thing has led to the emergence of human-like meaningful symbols. So let's have a look at these sentences now. Thoughts precede all speech acts. Now it does talk about the language and a speaker bringing it, but there is a thought before all speech acts is maybe pushing it. I am not fully in agreement with the fact that it says all speech acts. Some speech acts, yes. Language, yes. But all speech acts, perhaps not. And these thoughts pop up in our heads even in the absence of any stimuli. So this part is correct, but I, I don't think that this is a good summary. And also the first part is a little bit iffy. I'll come back to it if I don't get a better summary. Displaced reference is particular to humans and thoughts pop into our heads for no real reason. Nowhere does it say that it is particular to humans or it is unique to humans. It says that we have this feature but it is a feature of language it does not say that it is only limited to humans thoughts are essential to communication yes and only humans have the ability to think about objects not present in their surroundings so once again saying that only humans do this that is invalid maybe there are animals who do this and we know for a fact that animals actually do it even though they don't have some sort of danger or they don't have a predator just around them but they can sense it through various ways and they communicate about it so I, I don't think that limiting it to only humans is valid also whenever you get strong words like only or something like all you need to be extra careful if that is mentioned in the passage or not nowhere does it say that these abilities are limited to only humans nowhere in the passage does it say that it is for all speech acts and not just language. Fourth one, the ability to think about objects not present in our environment precedes the development of human communication or human language. I think this is a very good summary. It is talking about the displaced reference which is mentioned here. It is talking about what impact it had. It became a distinguishing feature of the language. It led to the evolution or the development of human communication. I think that is what the paragraph was trying to say. So once again, one and three, I ruled them out because they had very strong words such as all and only, which were not mentioned in the paragraph. Second one was also ruled out for a very similar reason because it says that it is unique to humans. The displaced reference part is particular only to humans. So once again, that was the reason that two was ruled out. And once you ruled out one, two, and three, four became as your clear cut answer. I read fourth once again, and it does summarize the paragraph well. So I'm very comfortable marking four as my answer here. 
Hope you learned something from this video. Thank you. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get notifications of future videos.